Microsoft is holding another event on the 22nd of September at 11 a.m. US Eastern Time. That'll be 4 a.m. on the 23rd here in Melbourne, so I probably won't be covering it live. And while Windows 11 is officially set to launch on October the 6th, this event is to announce some new Surface hardware. In fact, if the rumors are to be believed, Microsoft are going to announce more Surface hardware than ever before. These days, it's pretty hard for companies to keep the lid on exciting and shiny new products. To bring a new product to market, there are hundreds of people working on the design over many years. There's massive supply chains across multiple countries. And even a company like Apple with its ruthless secret police can't stop details of new iToys emerging before their propaganda machine swings into full NLP hypnosis mode. In the tech sector, rumors and leaks pretty much run the news these days. So it seems that there are possibly up to six products that will be announced by Microsoft at their I wish we could be cool like Apple Media event. In a company like Microsoft, there are thousands of people working in marketing and sales who are already briefed on these sorts of upcoming products. In some cases, they'll even be talking to customers about them. But can you believe that they haven't told me anything? It's unbelievable. But even though the expectations around this event are probably fairly accurate at this stage, I think that there is a possibility that Microsoft could surprise us with a device that's completely unexpected. They have managed to do this before with the launch of the original Surface Book back in 2015. That device was pretty groundbreaking, Microsoft's first actual laptop, and it came as a complete surprise. I remember speaking with my colleagues in the Surface marketing team at the time, and even they had no idea that it was coming. So let's look at the rumors first, and then I'll tell you what I think Microsoft could have up their sleeve. First up, the Surface Duo 2. We haven't reviewed Microsoft's Android-powered Surface Duo foldable phone, tablet, or phablet, because it was never launched in Australia. And I believe one reason that it wasn't launched in Australia is because it didn't have an NFC chip. Australia has long been ahead of markets like the USA in terms of adoption of contactless payments, and paying for things with your phone is pretty normal across the board, whether it's Android or Apple. We've had NFC chips in our credit cards for nearly 10 years now, and 55% of our point of sale transactions were processed using NFC in 2019. It'd be much higher than that today in 2021. So a phone without an NFC chip is a non-event in Australia, especially at the high end of the market. However, there have been several leaks of the Surface Duo 2 that suggest that it will indeed have an NFC chip, as well as much better cameras than the previous model. So there's a good chance that Microsoft will release this in Australia, I'm pretty excited about the prospect of being able to use my Surface Pen on a mobile device that adapts to a large screen size. Researching, messaging, reading, and taking notes on even the largest of single screen mobile devices is terribly compromised by that limited screen real estate. A device that is somewhat pocketable, yet light and thin, and that can expand to meet the high demands that we put on modern mobile devices, that's of great interest to me. I've been a long-term user of the Samsung Galaxy Note series, and now that that appears to be going away, the Surface Duo could be a great successor, and I'd be excited to review it if it does get launched here. The official Microsoft event page shows a brand new Surface 2-in-1 device that could be either a Surface Go 3 or a Surface Pro 8. Both devices are expected in this massive lineup. The Surface Pro 8 will likely include an 11th generation Intel ultra-low power processor. There is some discussion that it might also include Thunderbolt, perhaps under the USB 4 standard. Thunderbolt is a feature that many tech enthusiasts long to have on Surface, opening up much faster data transfer speeds and the potential to use things like external GPUs. It would also be better for more consistent docking capabilities for organizations with a mixed fleet. Can they pack a new processor and USB 4 into the slim form factor of the Surface Pro X with its beautiful screen? I guess we'll know for sure on the 22nd. I think that it's likely that the Surface Pro 8 will match the design of the Surface Pro X, and it will probably be compatible with the Surface Pro X slim pen and keyboard with its built-in pen barn. I'd suggest that it's probably going to be slightly thicker than the Pro X, even if it has roughly the same shape and weight. But it will likely have the removable SSD that's found in the Surface Pro X and also the Surface Laptop, which is incredibly important to many of Microsoft's key customers who work with highly sensitive information. One more thing that people are talking about is a higher refresh rate display. Well, I think that refresh rate kind of falls into that category of marketing number junk, like pixels per inch. It could actually deliver a better pen experience, giving you a slightly more responsive feel. Now, while they're updating the pen experience and probably changing over to the new slim pen design from the Pro X, hopefully they can finally get rid of that pen wobble that happens when you draw slow diagonal lines. 
We'd like to see Microsoft keep pushing forward with incremental improvements to the pen experience with all of the products that get released on the 22nd. Also, keep an eye on the speakers. The Surface Pro 7 Plus has been a great workhorse for me in the last few months, but the one disappointment that I've had with it is that the speakers are pretty poor compared to the Surface Pro 7 and prior models. They're simply not powerful enough, much quieter than the previous model, and hopefully Microsoft addresses this in the Pro 8. Could there be another update to the Surface Pro X? Since its launch in 2019, the Pro X has already had a processor update. I've been running Windows 11 on the Surface Pro X with the SQ2 processor for several months now under the Windows Insider program. The Pro X continues to be my go-to device for video conferencing on Zoom and Teams. The ARM processor is far better at video encoding and decoding. It runs cooler and it uses less power to do it. So it's a great choice for a modern office worker who doesn't need much legacy device and software support and they want great battery life. And the rumors are that the Surface Pro X will get its third processor bump, leaving the design basically as it is, and I'm okay with that because it's still pretty magnificent. Like the Pro 8, the Pro X might also get a higher display refresh rate and maybe even USB 4. Microsoft are also expected to announce an update to the Surface Go line, which we hope includes an improved entry-level processor option. The rumors suggest that any changes to the Surface Go range are likely to be incremental, just like the Pro X, largely keeping the same form factor and pricing. I don't think it's going to happen, but what I'd really like to see in the Surface Go is an ARM processor option like the SQ2 or the SQ3 as it might be. To me, an ARM processor makes much more sense in the 10-inch companion device range than it does in the Surface Pro X. The other product that's been talked about a lot in rumors is the Surface Book 4. In fact, one of the rumors is that Microsoft might drop the Surface Book name altogether in favor of calling the new device something like the Surface Laptop Pro. Most of the rumors have been based around a Microsoft patent that suggests that the screen will not detach on the Book 4, abandoning the funky hinge design that remains unique to the Book series. With this new design, the screen would pivot into a two-in-one tablet mode, hopefully encouraging the kind of creativity that the Book series is capable of. I absolutely love using the 15-inch Surface Book screen on its own as a tablet. However, the reality is that most people don't detach the screen. And as cool as it is, it is just too complicated. I mean, you've got to find the right button to press to release the screen. You've got to wait that second or two for the mechanism to click in and then detach the screen. And if you were running some software that was accessing the GPU based in the keyboard, well, then it wouldn't work. Once you've hit a couple of complications like that, most people are going to give up. Those that do persist will reap the benefits of a very flexible, creative device. But unfortunately, most people won't invest the time to learn new things. So I think it's time for Microsoft to innovate around the two-in-one concept here. There are plenty of 360 style devices out there in the market that I think are more accessible than the Surface Book detachable design. One big advantage of this potential new design is that there would be a lot more volume to house the processor, mainboard components and GPU together in a space that's far less constrained thermally than it is in the incredibly thin Surface Book screen. Dropping the detachment altogether could also save quite a lot of weight, which would be a real bonus for creatives and moving the weight out of the display would take away the top heaviness of the Book series. One more interesting rumor is that the Book 4 might support magnetic attaching and charging for the Surface Slim Pen. Whatever it ends up being called, the Surface Book 4 is bound to add an interesting element to this massive launch event. One last product that I do expect to see amongst this lineup that I haven't heard many rumors about is the Surface Studio 3. The Studio 2 has been my daily driver for the last 18 months in perpetually locked down Melbourne. Since I haven't been able to leave the home office very much at all, I've spent a lot of my time delivering training using my studio. The studio is still a standout device in the market. There simply isn't another all-in-one like it. And I love that Surface were brave enough to make it. Other companies like Dell, Lenovo, HP, Acer, and even Apple all make some sort of all-in-one device, but none of them come close to the studio. But with Windows 11 on the way, we found ourselves in the odd situation where a current Surface product would apparently not be supported on Windows 11. Now, the reality, of course, is that I'm running Windows 11 on the Studio 2. And as expected, Microsoft have backed down on their stringent Windows 11 requirements, and Windows 11 is now supported on the Studio 2. However, I do expect that Microsoft will revise and release a Surface Studio 3 with an 11th generation Intel processor, a new GPU, while retaining much the same form factor. I think that it's likely to have an improved high refresh rate display, and an updated pen experience. Who knows, they might even update the webcam to a 4K model, even though the current one is of brilliant high quality. And it sits perfectly on the top of that Surface Studio screen right at the right angle, alongside of those brilliant dual Farfield Studio mics. 
The Surface Studio is still a breathtaking device and I think it's one of the best desktop computers ever made. So I don't expect them to change the form factor very much at all. So that's the rumors, but here's where I think Microsoft could go on the 22nd. When the Android-based Surface Duo was announced back in 2019, it was unveiled alongside of the Surface Neo, a Windows device of sorts that would run a new version of Windows called 10X. The 10X version of Windows was eventually shut down. Some features that were developed for 10X found their way into Windows 11, like the revised start menu design. But with the Windows 10X concept living on inside of Windows 11, and support for Android apps on Windows set to arrive early next year, surely the Surface Neo idea has some potential. Could the Surface Neo launch after all? Maybe. It was planned to be an Intel-based device, but surely the form factor would be better suited to a more power-efficient ARM processor. As a foldable companion device, I believe that the Neo would make more sense with ARM than the Surface Pro X does. The Pro X carries the expectations of a pro-level device, expectations that it can do anything you need to do on it, and for most people, it would struggle to achieve that due to the lack of software developer support. On the other hand, nobody expects an iPad mini to be able to plug into your 3D printer so that you can update the firmware. An ARM-based device makes more sense for companion devices in the Windows world in my view at the moment. So this is pure speculation, but we could see the Surface Neo come back from the dead on September the 22nd. I've recently reviewed the Espresso touchscreen USB-C portable display, linked below. It's a great product indeed, but how much more awesome would it be if it supported the Surface Pen and had a built-in kickstand? Microsoft have the design chops to be able to make an awesome addition to any desktop, laptop, tablet, or even Surface with a portable display that supports the Surface Pen. They already make a wide variety of devices with top-notch 3x2 displays from 10 inches all the way to 80 inches. A standalone display like this would enable far better workflows when you're at the desk, especially on a video call. So although there are no rumors, I do know personally that Microsoft have some very brilliant display scientists on staff who are cooking up all sorts of things all of the time. Maybe, just maybe, they're cooking up some displays for us. And on this topic, one thing that people constantly ask about is using the Surface as a display. It'd be great if all of the Surface devices that get released on the 22nd could double as a plug-in display for another computer. This can be a very compelling feature that could open up devices like the Surface Pro and Go to a massive market of people looking for a companion device to their workstation PC. So that's what we're expecting at this event on September the 22nd. Some of it might be wishful thinking, but who knows, right? If all of it comes together, it'll be a pretty awesome event. So we'll get straight on to making a video about it the very next morning. So if you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so that you get notified when we release our video. And one more thing. There's a key theme through all of the products that will be launched at this event. It's a thing that Microsoft have led the market in for a long time, and I think it's the most important factor of modern computing, multimodal. All of these upcoming Surface devices will support keyboard and mouse input, cameras and microphones, but also touch and pen input. In 2021, all computing devices should support these things in my view. And if you wanna know why I believe that and what the science says about it, then I'll leave a link to our science behind the Surface Pen series below. Because if you're not using all of these modes of input on your computing devices today, then you're simply not doing your best work. Tell us what you wanna see Surface release in the comments below and we'll see you on the 22nd.